We need to talk. And today we're going to talk about Michael Oakeshott, who is a conservative thinker from the kind of early, mid, early to mid uh, 1900s. And as I said in the previous video, one of the greatest pipe smokers of all time in the image that's always used of him. Now, he's a little bit unique in that he doesn't necessarily fit neatly into one of the camps of traditional conservatism, one nation conservatism, new right conservatism. Um, and it's always helpful when the thinkers do. You know, it's always thinking it's always helpful when in liberalism where you're kind of like um, or, or conservatism, you're like, you know, Thomas Hobbes, classic and you're like John Locke, classic liberal, all that, all that kind of thing. Um, or sorry, traditional, I should have said then. But um, not all thinkers fit neatly into these kind of little academic boxes that we like to to use when we kind of write exams. And Oakeshott is in that category. Now, but that doesn't mean he's useless for us in terms of essay writing. And in fact, maybe the opposite. He's actually a very useful thinker when we write. Um, because what he does brilliantly is he illustrates some of the ideas and the concepts that you'll come up against in conservatism, such as the, the change to conserve idea or empiricism, which is this idea of using kind of experience and rationality and the known and the tried and the tested over abstract ideas. He illustrates the ideas, the other ideas by core thinkers, and then allows us to develop these beautifully long paragraphs, gaining all sorts of AO1 and AO2 knowledge um, without too much additional effort and, 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 and research. So, so think of, I personally would use Oakeshott it, as my second thinker in a paragraph to develop the idea further. And I think, to be honest, you're, you're not really going to have an essay in conservatism where you, where you won't be using Oakeshott, or you couldn't use Oakeshott, because he's very, very, very useful, despite, despite the fact he doesn't fit into a particular category. So here he is, Michael Oakeshott, smoking his pipe, wearing his wonderful little tweed suit, and generally being a dapper gentleman. Um, that popularity of a few things shouldn't be there. Ignore that. That's actually from a previous previous um, uh, slide. So let's, let's find out about him. So he lives in, uh, like as I said, the kind of the early to mid kind of 1900s. Um, uh, this is when he's kind of living and when he's writing. He's seeing the the, the Russian Revolution that's kind of taken place. We've got the, the Chinese Revolution has always kind of taken place. We've just got, got World War One, World War Two. He's seeing the impact that ideological thinking is is having whether that's ideological thinking excuse me um whether that's ideological thinking of the nazis or f uh, or which we would probably say is a bad ideology or or from liberals which we might probably argue is a good ideology or um or, or the socialists and the communists he's saying look this abstract un a tempered thinking is causing disaster in these countries. Um, but he starts off in the same place as many conservatives by saying that human beings are imperfect. He links back to Hobbes. But he develops it by saying that although we are imperfect, we are not necessarily immoral. So whereas Hobbes would be saying, you know, man lives in a state of war, our lives are was it short and brutish and all that kind of stuff, Oakeshott acknowledges that we have flaws, but also kind of develops the thinking. Remember, conservatism evolves and says we're not necessarily immoral. We're not past saving. There are elements of us which are, of course, good and rational and, and, and capable of, um, of development. But he is very, very cautious of taking those ideas into um, uh, a liberal idea of saying, well, because we're not necessarily immoral, we can be developed into these perfect creatures and, and, and we, can, we can get there. Because he says that should always produ produces frustration. By having an ideology or a world belief that says, oh, the world should be like this and the world should be like that and we could be like this, you're always going to end up frustrated because you're never going to be able to accept and value what is already here. And Oakeshott's um, opinions are about reconciling to yourself to what is which produces appreciation for those institutions and those values that you have obviously of course if your country is terrible then you don't necessarily have to appreciate but his point is is that you're by by having a mindset which is all about philosophical idealism you will never be able to see the security and the value 
of what your country, your institutions, and your social structures actually already have. And you should try and be more reconciled and appreciate the society in which you have. And remember, of course, when he's writing, he's seeing these other countries that are throwing away their heritages, like you see in, like they saw in Russia, like they saw in China, like they've seen um, in other places, and will continue to have. They're throwing away their heritages and kind of wiping the slate clean and writing these new kind of constitutions. He writes, to be conservative is to prefer the familiar to the unknown, the tried to the untried, the actual to the possible. And this is where he illustrates and gives us a beautiful quote to develop this idea of empiricism, this idea of, of pragmatism. You know, we shouldn't think, oh, what could work? You should think, well, what has worked and what hasn't worked? You know, deal with, use your experience, use things that you have tried, you have experienced um, to, uh, de to, to control your society rather than always kind of dreaming or coming up with concepts. It, it, it's almost, to be honest, if you kind of um, use these ideas in a kind of management job situation today, you know, let's try things that work, let's try the words, you might be kind of seen as, uh, you know, kind of right, like rather kind of stuck in your ways. But in a way, that's kind of what being conservative is in a way. It's about kind of going, well, we're not going to waste our time or, or, or risk the dangers, perhaps, of an unknown, untested system. We're going to go back to things that have worked before. And therefore, for Oakeshott, experience is greater than reason. So even if you're able, able to kind of sit there and rationally kind of say, well, life would be perfect if, Oakeshott argues, no, things that have actually been experienced and dealt with are more valuable to us than whatever you can, in theory, comprehend. Obviously, here he's not talking about science. He's not talking about technology. He's not saying, you know, he's not talking about inventions. He's talking political systems that involve the economy, society, human nature, you know, uh, the, the state. He is saying that the what people what experience is more valuable than these conceptual ideas. He argues and he develops that point, and this is again why he's such a good thinker for us to write about in our essays. He makes our paragraph so much more long, so much more developed, and he brings in so many kind of key words and ideas when you kind of talk about him. He says that rationalism, which is this idea that human beings can uh, make decisions for themselves and be capable of um, deciding what is best for them, oversimplifies complex problems. It's, it's a kind of a direct response to what we see in, in liberalism, and perhaps even what we see later in, in neoliberalism, um, that rationalism just oversimplifies. Just, just telling, saying, oh yeah, sure, everyone can make decisions on behalf of themselves and the world would be great, oversimplifies what is actually quite a complex problem, and because he's conservative, he will believe in a, a hierarchy, in a, in a strong government, in authority, um, rather than necessarily maximizing, um, in, a, in a total way, freedom. Communism, he says, is flawed rationalism in practice. You know, this is here it is. Look at communism. Look what's happened in Russia. Look what's going on in Cuba, China, wherever it might have been. Um, this is what happens. You know, people have have thought this would be wonderful on paper or in our minds, and actually, it's awful. Actually, it's terrible. Um, and he he uses and again, I make this point all the time, but you know, use the context in which the thinkers are writing. You know, mention these historical scenarios in your essays. You know. The familiar to the unknown, the tried to the untried. You know, Russia, he sees, or the USSR, he sees this is a big experiment that you've tried using your reason rather than your experience. And it looks what's happened. You've ended up with, with, with Stalin and huge amounts of poverty and, 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 and ruining the freedoms of your, of, of your country. And so in summary, he then argues that ruling and dreaming generates tyranny. When you try to impose an ideology on a country which is not natural or native or, or pre-tested in that country, you have to enforce it through dictatorship, through tyranny, through forcing people to do things that you might not want. Perhaps we could maybe see this in, in countries like Afghanistan more recently. You know, when, when, when an outside force tries to impose their ideology on another country, it isn't or it is not nearly as simple as them going, oh, great, cool. We're now we've got an ideology, new ideology, because what as what you can see in Afghanistan now, there's now a, 
an ideological divide between those that like the way things were and the way and those that want like the way that things um, have become under the kind of the Western um, influence. I'm not making a judgment call on Afghanistan, merely pointing out that it is very hard to change the core ideology of a society. And then, uh, what have I written there? Uh, note that his state is developed from locks. Yeah, he, his ideas are... Uh, no, that shouldn't be there. That's, that's, I'm so sorry. Ignore that. That's, um, that's John Stuart Mill. I must, I must have mis... mis I must have um, reused my slide. Forget the orange bit, forget the blue bit, but, but note down everything else. And he comes up with these two beautiful um, analogies that, again, I think are so good uh, for essays because they stick in our head. We can write a few lines on them, get a few, mar a few extra marks, job done. And at the end of the day, our political ideas essays are only 24 marks. So two marks here, three marks here is valuable. Um, and he's got two analogies that I'd like to discuss with you today, and I'll move myself to the one side. His first one is about um, a boat. I'll, I'll read the quote and then I'll explain the story in kind of my own words. He says, we all sail in a boundless sea with no appointed destination. The job of government is to reflect this by keeping the boat afloat at all costs, using experience to negotiate every storm, stoicism to accept necessary changes of direction, and not fixating on a port that may not exist. Um, I should have given. I should have got myself a little boat or something, really, shouldn't I? To kind of make this um, point, but I, I will use um, this ancient PlayStation controller as my boat. So here it is. It's 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 it's, flo it's floating away in my little um, ocean ocean of life. And the point I, I, he's he's trying to make here is that for for for, an, for someone that follows an ideology which is more ideological, and in in the case of this course, we're talking anarchism, liberalism, socialism. Um, to an extent, maybe even um, in, uh, environmentalism and nationalism uh, as well, is that you, you take a society in whatever place it's at and you say, right, this is actually what we want the society to be. I can't see my fingers on the screen. And you, ha you have this destination in mind. So take liberalism. You know, so, so our destination is going to be, is going to maximize freedom. It's going to have equality. It's going to have these rights. It's going to have... Um, democracy. It's gonna. We're gonna bring rationalism to all the people. We're gonna have education. Maybe then liberals go further, and you kind of say, well, actually, then we need. We then need to kind of rebalance. We need to have distributive justice, veil of ignorance, blah 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 blah. But you, in your head, you've got this destination that we need to take our little kind of boat to. And so, for a liberal or a socialist, you've got this destination, and you're gonna be taking your society to it, either through revolution or through legislation or through or through or through whatever but the point is you have this end goal you have this goal you're getting to and and oakshot completely rejects that in his conservative view his view is here is the boat it's in the ocean keep it afloat we're not going anywhere we're just going to keep repairing the boat if this bit springs a leak we're going to patch it up so if all of a sudden we have an issue with with workers' rights, we're going to put some legislation in about workers' rights. If all of a sudden we need to deal with problems with, with housing, then let's legislate for that. I'm kind of bringing in kind of One Nation Israeli idea here, change to conserve. You know, these are the principles I'm bringing in here. You know, uh, if, if we need to move the boats to the left, we're going to do it. If we have to, uh, if we have to abolish slavery, if we have to, um, you know, think of your, your, your modern examples here of, you know, if we need to, if we have to do Brexit, whatever it might be, if we need to, to reinvent the economy, you know, perhaps, you know, maybe kind of, maybe kind of bring in some ideas from the new right here. You know, if we need to change something, we will with the goal of keeping the boat afloat, not with the goal of going to a particular destination. And I think that's a lovely idea, uh, visual image that illustrates conservative ideas that it's about keeping society stable, secure, safe, alive, floating, rather than trying to get to a port or a country called liberalism, called socialism, called whatever you want. The other one he, he uses, uh, I'm going to call the chef, uh, where he talks about the point he's trying to make is that experience, trial and error, rather than abstract philosophy, is where wisdom is in achieved. And the quote from him here is, In a kitchen, cookbooks are only useful after the experience of preparing a meal. And so he's coming back to this point again of um, experience over 
reason. If I was to give you a cookbook and say, follow these instructions, and, you, and, and you'll end up with this beautiful five-star restaurant meal, um, you in theoret theoretically have all the instructions. But unless you actually have experience of being a chef and of doing many of these things before and you know kind of what works and what doesn't work, you're highly unlikely to be successful. You might be. But you're highly unlikely to be successful. You know, we've all seen the Bake Off. We know how badly these things go. Um, the person that has made the souffle before will have a better shot of making the souffle than the person that just has the instructions of how to make a souffle. And so the point here he is making, if we go back to the point, is that experience trial and error rather than abstract philosophy such as maybe the uh, like a the communist manual Mein Kampf um, uh, treaties or whatever it might be um, is where wisdom is is achieved um, so you've got two lovely analogies here there's so much there you could so much there to kind of develop Oakshot's ideas I will fully admit to being a little bit of a fanboy I'm not sure I always agree with his ideas but I like the way he thinks and I like the way he develops his ideas and I like the analogies that he uses and if I was going to be writing an essay on conservatism I would I would start with other thinkers to make my point about what the paragraph is going to be about and then I would use Oakshot to then extend and expand that idea out into a long detailed um, paragraph obviously while making sure that the thread of the whole essay is that comparison because remember essays and political ideas are always agreements and disagreements between um, different thinkers and different strands of the ideology oh but the new right is coming conservatism is about to change we're now historically reaching the the mid 70s the early 1980s and conservatism is about to have a, a short, sharp in, induction or injection of Thatcherism, Reagan economics, the individualism of Ayn Rand, um, the libertarianism of, of Nozick, and we, there's loads more to learn about. I hope you have enjoyed this look at Michael Oakshot. I hope your essays go well. Please, if you like the video, then please like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do. Um, if I made any mistakes, let me know in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.